Okay, first up, talking about environments. All right, so some things we need to be concerned with. Now, we're talking about SCADA, or Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. You may or may not be familiar with that term, but it's very important that you understand what it is and the implications if these things are not maintained properly. Okay, it has a big impact or a big potential impact because these types of systems usually refer to centralized systems that which uh, monitor and control entire sites or complexes of systems spread throughout large areas. All right, so what does that really mean? Well, think about water treatment facilities, the electrical grid, the power grid, things along those lines that, that really encompass large areas of critical infrastructure. Okay, this is just a simplistic diagram. We'll dig down deeper here in just a moment, but just so you understand some of the terminology within a SCADA environment. Okay, so we have such things as an RTU or a remote terminal unit, and that is connections to sensors, and it's going to convert that sensor information and whatever that sensor might be, whether it's on a pipe or some piece of equipment within a larger system that needs to give off sensors and alerts and so forth. They might, they might check the temperature or the pressure or the amount of electricity or voltage or, or what have you. Okay, there's going to be a sensor connected to that. The RTU then converts that sensor information into digital data. Next is a programmable logic unit, or logic controller rather, a PLC. It's similar to an RTU, but PLCs are a, little, are a little newer. They're more versatile, more economical, but they do the same type of function. They're going to report into an, a master terminal unit or an MTU. All right, next is a human machine interface or an HMI, and that's going to present the data that's collected from these RTUs or PLCs to a human operator who can then act upon that specific data. They may need to adjust valves or make sure that things are within acceptable ranges. And then the master terminal unit or the MTU is what sends information and instructions to the RTU or the PLC, and it's also going to receive instructions back and aggregate all that information. All right, so this is just an example of what a SCADA environment might look like. You may have some type of master uh, control area or like a control center where you have all the different screens from your different systems, whether it's a nuclear power plant or a, a water treatment facility or an electrical grid, sewage system, okay, you name it. These PLCs and RTUs are spread out throughout the entire system. They all report back to the MTU, and you have an operator that sits there and manages and maintains and monitors all these things. Okay, so if we look at this in a little more detail, you can see in a SCADA system, we have the RTUs. Okay, they're going to be computers set up along the network. And typically, these are closed off networks that are not connected to the internet, or at least traditionally. You'll see as we go along here, they've kind of evolved uh, from a, a non-connected kind of air-gapped system into things that are now more distributed, networked, or actually connected to the internet. But at any rate, we have the RTUs that are connected to our network. They all kind of report into an MTU. We may have a monitor that looks, or a human uh, interface that actually looks in and, and controls. And then we have people that have access potentially through the internet, okay, it just depends. So in this type of an environment, we have to be aware of the fact that we could have a, re a remote access hacker that can get in if our machine or our network rather is connected to the internet. Or if we have some type of access point, whether it is a legitimate access point or a rogue access point, we may have a remote access attacker who can come in with, from within our network, even if it's not connected to the internet per se, if they're able to get access to the network itself, they could potentially do some harm. Okay, and again, as you can imagine, these things are very widespread. They connect and control large pieces of infrastructure. So we want to make sure that we have these things as secure as possible. So one way we may do that, okay, let's just say for instance, all of our SCADA systems, these these terminals cannot be updated. Okay, they're just in a situation where they are what they are, we can't patch them. So we wouldn't be able to apply, let's say for instance, a host-based intrusion detection system. All right, we wouldn't be able to put anything on the host specifically, but we could put a network-based intrusion detection system. All right, we could firewall off the network itself, and then we could put some type of network intrusion detection system in place so that if any type of attacker were to come in remotely or even if they're atta attaching to the network itself, we could detect that intrusion. Okay, some SCADA security concerns. Now, as I mentioned, when these types of systems were first invented and first brought online, they were very monolithic, they were not connected to the internet, and they weren't really designed to be connected to anything else. They were just very self-contained systems. So security wasn't really as much of an issue as it is today. Let's just leave it at that and say it wasn't really baked in uh, and as big of a concern. So from the monolithic, it's kind of evolved into a distributed system, which is then evolved into networked, and then and you can see the progression here so from networked and then we now went into the internet of things and we have access potentially from anywhere 
So some security implications and some concerns obviously would be on our authorized access, whether it be malware, viruses, we could have hacking attempts and theft or destruction of data, okay? Or at the very least to plant something that's gonna allow them to have a backdoor at some later point, all right? So all of these things are big concerns from, from a security standpoint. We also have to understand that these types of attacks can be used to degrade or destroy critical infrastructure. Okay, two big examples, one you may or may not be aware of, the other was all over the news for, for many, many months, and actually you know, a couple of years now. But in 2000, in Australia, there was a sewage system that was attacked. Now, it ended up being a, a disgruntled internal employee, but that person was able to, to, in effect, shut down the sewage system, and it backed up throughout parks and throughout all uh, areas within Australia, or a lot of areas within Australia, creating damage and some havoc. In 2010, a much more determined and a much more focused attack that was actually using code as a weapon, so to speak, and that was actually called Stuxnet. And it was, of course, rumored, depending upon where you read and what you want to believe or not believe, it was a sponsored, very specific attack by either the U.S., Israel, or, again, rumor at this point, I guess, but uh, it was created basically as a weapon, and it was targeted specifically at the PLCs and the SCADA systems that were used in Iran's nuclear facilities by basically inserting malware. Okay, it was an air-gapped system, but it was on USB drives that somebody had apparently had plugged in. And when they went into that specific system, it infected, explored throughout the system, downloaded some vulnerabilities, and they were able to find out exactly what PLCs they needed to attack. As soon as it found out the ones that it, that it needed, it was able to basically destroy up to a fifth of the centrifuges within that nuclear facility, basically causing the centrifuges to spin out of control. The, the implication of that is, or the kind of the, the scary part is, the malware or the actual attack reported back to the HMIs, the human machine interface, and reported back to the operators that everything was fine. So they had no idea that, that the centrifuges were spinning out of control until it was too late. Okay, and they actually kind of uh, burned themselves out and were destroyed. So it severely crippled Iran's nuclear facilities during that time period. So again, SCADA systems have obviously great use. They have a lot of potential, but they also have a huge uh, potential for impact if they're breached. And we rely heavily on these types of things for critical infrastructure throughout pretty much all facets of society.